hot jobs report here to discuss. T. Rowe Price is Sebastian Page. He's been a long time reluctant bear, self described, I might add. He might be getting closer to neutral, however. Welcome back. It's good to see you. One of these times, I know you're just going to show up and say, um, you know what, Scott, I'm a, re I'm a reluctant bull now. And why are we at that moment yet? Scott, I think we're getting closer. We would probably consider closing our underweight, which is about a percent now, so close to neutral, around 4,100 with a higher VIX and negative sentiment. That might be enough to get us back in. I'm still worried about three big macro risks. Rising rates, obviously. Inflation, I think, has risk to the upside. And valuations, just a compressed equity premium. But no, Scott, we're not panicking. But these are serious macro risks to worry about. I know, but those macro risks, Sebastian, have existed since the beginning of the year. Um, arguably, and we're, we're later along in the Fed cycle, and we're stronger along in the economy than many thought we would be. So, you know, I've, I guess I would say I've heard this, I've seen this movie before, and yet the market's up quite nicely this year. The S&P is, I don't care whether it's been driven by a, a handful and a half of stocks or not, it is what it is, and it is where it is. So how do we deal with all of that? Look, I think the rising rates risk is heating up as we speak. The 10-year is up 150 basis points in six months. With that velocity in rate hikes and in rate spikes, especially in the long end and the disinversion, things can break. So that remains a risk. And the passage of time, we still have yet to see a lot of the lagged effects of the Fed hikes. But, Scott, you're right that growth has surprised on the upside. If you look at GDP growth expectations starting of Q3 this quarter, we were at 0.3 and we're now at 3%. So this is just annualized for this quarter. And it tells you how quickly GDP growth expectations have come up. And the other thing we've talked about, Scott, a reason why things aren't cracking yet is this massive amount of money in the system. And we talk about excess savings running out. Excess savings is a bit of a wonky definition. If you look at money market funds, AUM, and you look at checking accounts, the amount of money that's in the system, it, a lot of it is at the top. And the bottom quintile of earners is really tapped out and loading up on debt. But the total aggregate amount of money, I call it the blob of money, it eats all the negative headlines, Scott. So, those explain what's happened this year and with growth surprising on the upside. And, you know, ultimately, uh, and the reason why we're close to neutral is there is oxygen for markets above 5%. Just look at the 60 years before the great financial crisis. The average 10-year was 5.8%. So we have to deal with the acceleration in the hikes and the, and, the, and the rates. But, yeah. I feel like you're almost rebutting yourself by suggesting, yeah, I know their rates are 5 percent, but we're just normalizing. And it's like, yeah, I know that the economy's strong, but that's just because of all the stimulus that's in the system. And I'm thinking like, uh, yeah, and maybe that's enough of a reason that we're not going to have the gloom and doom lag effects that we otherwise would without all of the stimulus in the system. And that's been the most difficult thing to calculate and to quantify is because all the stimulus that no one really could understand what it was truly meaning for the consumer and the economy that that's gotten us to this point, well, maybe it was just enough to stave off any really bad scenario from the economy. In fact, maybe the Fed's going to pull this off. I think that's right, Scott. And where we stand now, we're just waiting for a pullback and a spike in the VIX, a real deterioration in sentiment. I think we're getting closer. And in the meantime, where we've been adding to stocks this year has been in parts of the markets that haven't participated in the rally. We like real asset stocks, for example, stocks of energy companies, utilities, um, stocks of um, real estate companies, and with a lot of active management and stock picking in it, but also metals and mining stocks. So those real asset equities have been um, an area where we've been incrementally adding to, to stocks. They haven't participated, and we think there's upside risk to inflation. The labor market remains 
incredibly strong, and that explains the strength of the consumer, but also it poses upside risk to inflation. I think the prints today aren't that encouraging if you put them in the context of all the other numbers we're getting on the labor markets. Yeah. Um, they are strong.